This is part two of the Prius solar build. You need to watch part one to see about understanding the problems with putting solar on a Prius and how the Prius makes power and then which panel and which charger I picked out and how it's going to be put together. So in part two, the system is put together and we're going to test it. So part one, I'll put a link right here in the upper right hand corner or a link below and you can watch part one. If you've seen part one, then let's get on with part two. When I first saw this panel and the dimensions and the specs, I was really hoping this could happen. And it worked out awesome. So when this thing is folded up and closed up, it fits right in the pocket behind the driver's seat and the cord can be tucked up under the bed. And that way it doesn't have to be disconnected. You can just reach around, pull it in front and put it in place. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to tell you about the next two videos I have in process. All right, so here we are at Walmart over in the RV section, and I've got the panel in place. It's about 1130 in the day, so the sun is probably isn't quite the strongest yet. So the panel is set up there, and it's a beautiful day. There's uh, hardly any clouds in the sky, just some real light ones, so it should be good for testing. So here's a look from the inside and we'll check our charge controller and we're doing 2.4 amps. This is a great little charge controller. It'll handle up to 30 amps, which is overkill. I could have bought the smaller one, but it doesn't have all the features. But what it shows here on the first is this is our voltage 12.3 and I have turned on our draw back here. So we're drawing six amps. That'll keep, um, that should help us see everything that's going on. So the first thing to display here is this is the voltage um, of the battery right now. Next one shows us the voltage coming out of the panel. This one shows us the amps coming out of the panel into the battery. Shows us at 62% battery full. Battery at 12.3. I'm not quite sure why that one's different from the other one. This is if I had, a, had my um, electrical panel connected right here, it would show me how many amps I am using and this one would show me how many amp hours I've used. And then this one is a temperature check. It needs to know the temperature, so it's in Celsius. And this is, um, I'm not sure which one this one is, and this shows me if there's any errors. Um, so I have, I have my panel back here, and I'll, I'll post the video on this one. I like this one. This shows me all that on one screen, so I don't really need to reroute it, but I could reroute my 12-volt electrical panel into the load here and then I could have that all in one place so that's so that's an option but wiring is very easy here's your plus and your minus going to your battery your 12 volt battery and here's your plus and minus going to the panel kind of tricky I had to mark this the blue is actually the ground so I put some black tape on it and the brown is the positive so let's see what our panel is doing so we're, we're holding about 2.4 amps so I'm just gonna let that sit for a while and see if it goes any higher and then we will put it on the roof and check that feed out so the voltage held constant, so I wanted to put it out for a good comparison. Now the sun is not straight up. The sun is still kind of this way since we're in spring. And so I've gone ahead and, and tried to find the maximum. So right here, just laying across the windshield, let's check it. And I was getting over five. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, that's 5.2, which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to try and slide, see what happens if we slide the panel right on top of the car. So let me slide it back, put it over here on the side. Let's see how that impacted it. So that brought, brought us down to 4.5. So it really does matter to get it all directly into the sun. It definitely helps. One of the neat things about this panel is how much you could slide it up, down, forward, side to side, drape it over the edge, drape it over the back, just depending on how you're needing to park. So to address the issue of if you're going to leave, if you're going to be static camping, and you're going to go away for a while. Well, you want to leave the panel on the car, but you don't want it to blow away if it's pretty high wind. I got these 48 inch flat bungees, and so they fit real nice in between the panels. They clip right here to my wind deflector. And that way it won't blow away. Don't even attempt driving a car with it in this way because it won't stay on. It'll blow away. So the next thing I wanted to test is I wanted to see if the solar panel could help and assist out the air conditioning system, the 12 volt air conditioning system. But today is not going to be a very good test because as you can see it's 57 degrees outside. Even though I'm having a lot of solar heating right now with that sun and when I'm all closed up in here the temperature does go up but it's just not going to be a valid test. But I did want to show you a little bit of the display and how this works. So right now the car is in the on position and I have the climate control on and I have it set at 68 and recirculate. 
So right now I've got the picture of the display of the 200 volt dry battery and as you can see it is fully charged. So it's going to be charging that 12 volt battery. You know that's interesting because that battery was not 100% full when I came in here uh, and now it is. So I'm going to watch this for a little bit. So I've got the panel running and the panel is running right now at we got the batteries charged back there and it is putting out five amps, a little over five amps. So I'm just gonna sit here for a little while and see if that, see how fast that battery indicator comes down. It may, it's rarely ever green is kind of what's caught my attention. It never goes all the way fully green unless you're coasting downhill because when it fills up that high and you're driving, it will shut off the engine and start using up some of that battery to uh, for propulsion to, to draw the battery back down so that's kind of usual that <laughs> that thing is sitting on full so maybe uh, i don't know a little confusing so i'm learning something new here i'm sure people out there can help me out and tell me more about this but i'm just going to sit here for a while and see how that's drawn down i'm gonna go over here to climate control i'm gonna turn it a good bit colder let's go down to maybe 65. let's go even colder oops let's not do that that's all the way low and that's going to kick it on high so Let's see, there we go, so 65, it is blowing out cold air, hmm, I don't know, I don't think this is going to be a valid test day for this, so I'm just going to kind of skip this test, and we'll just have to do it another day on a warmer day and check it out. So for now, um, this is a bit of a puzzle, because when I run the air conditioner without the panel, this battery will start dropping down. Um, and you'll just see the, the lines tick, 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 till it gets down to two bars and then it'll kick the engine on to recharge the battery. And this is pretty cool that this thing is going down so slowly. Let's go ahead and put it on maximum here then. Right down here, so that'll make sure that everything's running. All right, we're, uh, we're doing full out air conditioning. And we're still, that is really cool. We're still on full power on the 200 volt drive battery. Very interesting. All right, so I'm gonna let this run a little while, but the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the solar panel. Um, actually, maybe I can pull the wire out right here. So let me pull out, I'm gonna kill the panel. Yep, there we go. I got the, I pulled the ground wire out of the charge controller so let's see if that has any effect on drawing the battery down yep now it's drawing down how fascinating this is very unexpected <laughs> this is really cool maybe there is something to being able to run the 12 volt AC off the solar panel so let's see how quickly the other bars drop down because you saw how long it stayed at full power on the battery and this is the 200 volt battery hmm I don't want to go as far to say is that the 12 volt battery is feeding back and charging the 200 volt battery but I'm not that big an expert on the Prius so I'm not sure See if we can get it to drop down another bar here. Well, I may have to say it might be inconclusive because it just may be a, a, a matter of it's just not warm enough outside to do a good test. But it certainly warrants some more testing on this because I'm very curious. Uh, this has got my curiosity up if this could be helpful. So I'm gonna, this, this video I think is long enough and I think we've got enough uh, information in here so I'm going to cut it off here and we're going to move on to the summary. Okay, I, I had just stopped filming and I paused the video for, I think, less than 30 seconds. And it dropped another bar and then it dropped another bar. 
So what I'm going to do here, there you can see it's dropping real fast now. So at this level, the car is going to kick on in a minute. There it goes. The car just kicked on. You can see it's feeding the battery. So now it's going to recharge the battery. So we might just continue this test because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reconnect that solar panel. And let's do another round and see. See if there's anything to this. Now, I do know that it will not, it will not charge. When the engine goes through this uh, cycle, it will not fully recharge the drive battery. It'll only probably take it up one more bar. And then the engine will cut off. So it runs the battery fairly low. That's what caught my attention, is when it's doing this cycling thing, it does not recharge the battery fully. Um, it'll just do it just for the three bars. see it takes a while for it to get charged up all right while it's doing that I'm gonna need to go get a screwdriver and I have got to reconnect uh, the wire I just pulled out of my charge controller so I'm gonna pause the video here and go do that and then we'll check back in with the car it took me about a minute to um, get the panel reconnected and as you can see it when it once it charged up to three bars the engine shut off now, right now, the outside cooling fan is running, and we're getting some super, super cold air in here. It's getting pretty cold. Um, but it's still putting out. So now, we're not running on any engine. We've got the charge controller running. Let's check in with that. We're running 14.4 volts. And we're bringing down four amps on the solar panel, so the sun has moved a little bit. So I could probably adjust the panel more up on the roof. I have it crosswise right now. I could probably adjust it and get another amp out of that. So what I'm waiting to see is, will we drop down to two bars and the engine have to kick back on or can we sustain the battery at this point and supply enough amps to keep the 12 volt air conditioning system up and running. Again, 57 degrees, not a fair test. But it's enough to uh, be interesting to follow more up with this in another video and uh, check this out. So if the panel isn't, isn't helping out much, the engine will kick on here fairly soon because we're down to two bars. This is normally about when the engine kicks on. One thing I can do is I can, well, I could put down the windows, but I don't think that's going to make much difference with these temperatures. See the time is 12.02, so the sun's pretty much overhead as much as it can be this time of year. It's holding on pretty well. I don't know. I really don't have any definitive proof, but there is some indication that it might be helping. Now, the next question would be, what would happen if we just go park the car in the shade and just let the uh, engine do its thing? And that's completely valid. Um, but this was just something I was curious about knowing. Still holding steady, still putting out super cold air. I know the compressor's running. Okay, there the engine kicked on. So, I don't know. Hard to tell. Not really sure at this point. So, let's move on though and uh, let's go over the results. So, we, here we have the ratings that are printed on the panel. And as you can see here, the maximum power output that it can have is 5.5 amps. And we hit 5 amps. So, I'm really quite pleased. So, you know, we were within about 10% of its maximum output. So, if we were in the summer, if uh, maybe about 1 o'clock, uh, stronger sun I think we could have got a little bit more out of it so let's look at our final results here so option one with it on the dashboard we got a pretty steady 2.4 amps option two with it on the roof we got a maximum of 5.26 if 
but we, we got pretty close to five most of the time. With the engine cycling time with the AC, kind of inconclusive. So let's look at the next videos. Uh, I've had this by request, how to make window and door screens for any vehicle. They're easy to get on, easy to get off. They're super simple to make. You only need a few things and they're small to store. And then the next one, which is gonna take me a good while to do, so I'm just in the planning phase, is a low amp solar powered compressor air conditioner. So the specs on this, if everything works out, will be to run about at 172 watts. That's an amp and a half at 110 volts or 13.8 amps at 12.5. So what that means is if it ran for eight hours nonstop, but I'm gonna add a thermostat to it. If it, ate, if it ran eight hours nonstop, it'd only be 110 amp hours. So if you had two 100 amp batteries, you can have, and that charge during the day, you could have air conditioning in your camper at night. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I love reading your comments and I'll see you next time.